So we've been focusing on adding more protocols so you get more out of the box observability using Pixie. And we've added two new protocols that we wanted to announce today. So I'm super excited to say that we now have support for Kafka and Nats. Um, both of these protocols are essentially message bus systems. So you can uh, post messages kind of in a pub sub kind of way. And then uh, you have consumers which can, can uh, read the messages off. And uh, these two protocols work the same way that uh, we trace all the other protocols that we have inside Pixie. So this is part of our eBPF based approach. Um, you don't have to instrument anything. Uh, you don't have to change any lines of code. You don't need even to redeploy anything. We just automatically use eBPF to snoop all the traffic and then we <laughs> detect whether that traffic is uh, Kafka or Nats. And when we detect that, we automatically start tracing it for you. And then we surface it up through the, the Pixie uh, platform so that you can see all the uh, good data. Um, before I get into the demo, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what it is that kind of what it is that we're actually tracing kind of under the hood. So uh, at the bottom of this slide here, what I have is a screenshot of some of the raw data that we're actually capturing. So this is the data table that that drives everything else inside of Pixie. And so you can see that um, each row is kind of an event that we've traced. And for every event, we have a timestamp of when that message occurred. We have a source and destination. So which pod did it come from? Which pod was it going to? Um, and in this case, since it's Kafka traffic, we have a command. So you can see that there's some uh, fetch commands here happening. Fetch is when it's going, when, Kafka, when there's a consumer trying to get data from Kafka. There's some produce commands, which is when a, a producer is writing data to Kafka. Um, and so you can see all the kind of traffic that's going on. And in addition to that, um, because of the eBPF based approach, you can actually get all of the uh, content of the messages as well. So we grab a bunch of information, metadata, and actually the body. Um, so you can see some of that in here. Like if you look at the produce request, which is the third record, you can see that there's in the response, there's a topics order. So we know that this particular produce request was just published something to the topic called order. So Kafka organizes all of its messages into, uh, into topics. And this one was posted, something was posted to the order topic. Um, you can also see uh, when you click on them, you can click on any record, you can see more details about it. Um, so same information, just zooming in here. You can see, for example, this is a different example. We see a request command that was a fetch. So we've kind of automatically traced that some consumer uh, dispatched a fetch to the Kafka server. And then again, here we see it's also to the same topic. So if you look down near the bottom, you see name order. That was the order topic. And it gives us all the information like the partition and the message number and all sorts of other goodies um, in terms of what's happening. So you can debug your applications. Um, finally, on the right, we have the request latency. This is the latency at the protocol level. So it's like individual messages from the client to the server. And so if there's any issues with that as well, you can monitor the latencies. Um, now, uh, while that, it looks really like that's, that's great. We can trace all the, the messages. The real question is how can you use this stuff to actually debug real, uh, issues with Kafka or any sort of message bus system. Um, and so we're going to focus on Kafka here. Um, and, uh, so the, we're going to use a demo and I've got a slide here showing what the, the demo setup is. So we have a, a simple Kafka broker in the middle. Um, that's our message bus. And we have a, this is an e-commerce kind of website where you can place orders. So there's an order service kind of, that's our front end. It takes orders from the website. And when an order is made, it's just gonna publish something um, or produce something to the Kafka broker into the order topic. And so it'll, it'll push that there. And then we have these two consumers on the right-hand side. Uh, one's called the shipping service. The other is the invoicing service. And these two services are just kind of constantly polling to see if there's any new orders inside of the, the message bus inside of Kafka. And so they're con constantly trying to fetch from Kafka. And when they get something new, what they're going to do is they're going to take some action. So the shipping service would you know, initiate the shipping process. And then the uh, invoicing service will um, you know, take the order, take that information, and generate an invoice out of that. Now, when you have a Kafka broker, when you have an application that has something like a message bus in it, uh, one important question uh, that often arises is what's the, um, 
are my consumers keeping up with the data that's being produced? Is there any lag in my system? So for example, if the producer uh, creates a message with offset seven, offset is uh, Kafka's terminology. So just think of it like a, a, a message number seven and it pushes it to the Kafka broker, right? Um, ideally the shipping service and invoicing service immediately pull that same order number and start working on it, right? They pull it out of Kafka and start working on this order number seven. Um, but if there's any issue in your application, then you might see a lag. And it's important to know if any of your services are running behind. And so this is often a question when you have a message bus is, is are my consumers lagging? Or are they running behind? And this is sort of, so the demo we're gonna go into is gonna to try to answer this question. And we'll see how we can use Pixie to answer questions like this. Um, so with that, I'm going to switch. So we'll move, switch, go to, um, go to uh, Pixie. So I'm going to go to the homepage here for Pixie. Um, and then um, here's my cluster. So um, we have the main page. So I'm coming here to the main page of Pixie. And what you see is generally a service map of everything inside your cluster and some other information. But in this case, we're interested in Kafka, right? So um, there's a number of Kafka scripts. So if you click on the script button here, you can search for those by typing Kafka. And where I usually like to start with, um, like when I'm trying to just understand what's happening in an application is we have these flow graph scripts for diff various different protocols. In this case, we're looking, gonna look at Kafka flow graph. But the flow graph script kind of gives you a nice overview of what's happening inside of your system. And so when you click on that, the first thing it's gonna tell you is, oh, you require a namespace. So it says, what namespace are you trying to, to look at the flow graph for? In this case, our demo is in a namespace called Kafka demo. That's our application. So I'm gonna click that. And so immediately what you see is kind of all the Kafka traffic in your, in your namespace, in your application. And so I'm gonna, so on the right hand, right hand side here we have is the Kafka server itself. And I'm gonna move that here into the middle. And then on uh, these other circles are different pods. So we have an order pod that was our producer. I'm gonna drag this over to the right to just make it a little bit more clear. And then we have our two consumers, which are the shipping service and the invoicing service. And they're the ones fetching from Kafka. So on the left, we have order, it's, it's writing to Kafka. And then on the right, we have our two consumers, which are reading. So this matches exactly what we had in the diagram on the slide. And we're able to see that uh, instantly with Pixie that like, okay, who's talking to who and what's my setup? What are all the things that are reading and writing to, to the Kafka message bus? And so I find it a really useful place to start. Um, and then at the bottom, there's some various different metrics there too that you can monitor and kind of see in terms of latencies and throughput and such. But again, the question we were trying to answer, if you remember is, is are my uh, consumers keeping up with the producer? So as we produce orders, are we able to keep up? And so there's a different script dedicated for that. I'm going to type Kafka here again. And then we have a dedicated script called Kafka producer consumer latency. So I'm going to click on this one. Um, and so when we come here, uh, first off, it shows you the list of producers that it knows about and the list of consumers that it knows about. And what we want to do immediately is we want to focus on a particular topic. So I'm just going to populate that right now. And I'm going to say, we're interested in the order topic. So we know that from our application that that our consumers and producers are writing to the order topic. And then we're gonna to wanna to say between any producer consumer combination, we wanna check for a lag. So we'll say, we only have one producer in this case. So I'll just put producer one. That was the name I got from the table here. And then on the right, we see we have our two consumers. Uh, so let's just check consumer shipping one, right? And we'll enter that in. And now we have a graph at the bottom. So. Um, we look at this and it doesn't look all that interesting, honestly, right? It's, it's, there's actually data there, if you look carefully, it's a blue line at the bottom. And so what this is actually telling us is that um, the lag is zero all the time. Um, now this is good news. Like if you don't have a lag, it means as soon as the producer uh, made an order and pushed it into a Kafka, um, the consumer was able to fetch it immediately and start working on it immediately. And so it's telling us everything is healthy uh, with our Kafka setup and our application's doing just fine. Right. Um, now I'm gonna switch over to this other service that we have, which was the invoicing service. So I'm gonna type uh, consumer invoicing one here, and we're gonna check that one. And so here we see something different. It's not at zero. And I'm gonna extend the time window here a little bit. 
so we can see what's going on. And so what we see here is, uh, whoa, it's not zero. So this should be sending off alarm bells, right? Um, it started off at zero, but it's gradually been creeping up over time. Now, what's happened is as I've been talking through this demo, uh, my colleague Hannah has actually started some traffic onto our web application. So she started generating some traffic to our website and um, it started placing orders. And the shipping service that we looked at initially um, is efficient, so it's able to kind of keep up with the rate that Hannah set up, and it was able to process all the orders that were coming in and being posted to Kafka. But this other service, our invoicing service, seems to have some sort of performance issue, and it's falling further and further behind, right? The, the rate of orders that are coming in, it just can't keep up with them. So it started off kind of zero lag, but then it went up to like two seconds, then four seconds, and eight seconds and 16 seconds. And it's it's trying, it's fetching data, starting to work on it. It's trying to work on them, work on them, work on them. And then, you know, it finishes that work and goes back to Kafka and says, what else do you have for me? And then Kafka overloads it with a bunch of more work because it's falling further and further behind. And so by the end of this time window, over this 10 minute window, it's already fallen like 60 seconds behind in, in its work. And this is super alarming in this case, right? It means we have a problem with our application. Um, if we actually come to the application itself, so in this tab, I have the application. Um, it's a very simple application, it's just meant for demo, so it's nothing fancy. But if you click on, click on shipping, what you'll see is all the shipments that have been made. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom here, and we see it has the last thing it knows about is shipment number uh, 1,253. And if I go to the invoicing page and we look at it, it thinks the last order that was made is 811. So we can actually see this problem manifested in the web application as well. Uh, we were able to catch it in Pixie, but we actually see the, the effect in the website. It's running behind. And if I refresh this page, you know, it is the invoicing service is trying really hard to kind of keep processing these things. It's now gone up to 827 but it's really not just able to keep up with the rate and it's falling behind. And this can be a frustrating experience. If imagine you were a customer and you were using this website, you wouldn't be happy because you're seeing conflicting information in the shipping and invoicing pages. Um, so what do you do in a situation like this, right? So once you kind of catch this sort of is issue with Pixie, you would wanna go back and see what's wrong with your invoicing service, right? There's clearly it's not able to keep up. So you'd probably wanna go back and maybe thread it so it can process more orders per second, or maybe there's some actual performance performance issue in there that you want to go fix. So you maybe want to go study it. Is there some bottleneck somewhere that you need to relieve? Um, but then you do want to go fix it and make sure that this line goes back to zero. So that's it for the demo. Uh, coming back to the slides, we have a bunch of different scripts for Kafka. So we covered the flow graph. We covered the last one, which is the producer consumer latency. There's other ones that on your own time, you can go take a look at and see um, if they're useful for you and sorts, the sorts of questions that, that you can answer with them.